Okay. Now, now I am wet and cold. And you know what they say, though, about a trooper? By golly, I'm going fishing. It's a crappie. Pretty nice size crappie at that. Sort of bit like a bluegill. Oh my gosh, where's my crappie magic jig? Oh, it's a big crappie. Golly. Where's my jig? Oh my goodness, where's my jig? Look where that jig is. Look where that jig is, way down in his throat. I got about eight or 10 crappie bites on that cast, and I got out in deeper water. Got out in deeper water and got that big slab. Now, we're not keeping any crappie today, but we're, this lake we're fishing has got a lot of crappie, so we're gonna concentrate on crappie a while. We may bass fish after a while, I don't know. We may just crappie fish. We're gonna talk about fishing lakes that are low, because all over Southern Oklahoma, we've had, this is the third year of a drought and, uh, and, and, and our lakes are low, and I'm fishing a, a big watershed lake right now. This lake is built just for getting water out of it and irrigating, actually irrigating pecan trees. And, uh, but, but you know, it's a good sized body of water. It holds a lot of water, but because we haven't had much rain, they've drawn a lot of water out of here. And they use, you drain that water out to water baby pecan trees. Now, pecan trees are taproot trees. That means that they, their roots go down and tap into an underwater source. So. They can do really well even in dry years, but the little trees have to be watered because those, those roots are not grown down deep enough and not found any water. There he is. That might be another bass. It's hard to tell. The bites are almost imperceptible. I thought they'd be knocking a snot out of it today. Another thing that's happening today is we've got a major weather change. I'm talking about a major weather change. It's another bass. It's another bass. All right, Jimmy, are we doing a bass fishing show or a crappie show? Look at you. They are just sucking it in. Look, look at there. The line is going right down the middle of that fish's mouth and that bait, like that big crappie, way down in there. Way down in there. I got, I laid my, ow, he's biting me. He quit biting me. Let me get this bait out of your mouth. I laid my needle nose. I laid my needle nose right up there. I'm using a little lucky bug. I got a little lucky bug on here, chartreuse and white lucky bug on a crappie magic head. And I've got 20 pound, 20 pound braid on the spinning reel. And if you look at this, I'm tied directly. I tied directly because what I, what I want to do when I'm fishing with my spinning reels is I, I if, if I was fishing tournament where, you know, every single bite is really, really important. If I was fishing a tournament, I'm going to put a leader on there every time, either a fluorocarbon leader or a fluorocarbon coated. When I'm fishing for fun, the first thing I'm going to do with my braided line on spinning reels is I'm just going to tie directly to the, to the bait. You know, I mean, this is 20 pound test line. It's got six pound test diameter, so it's a very small line. I can tie directly to that bait, and, uh, and if I catch fish on it, I don't have to add a leader, which saves me time and effort, and I've got stronger line. If I get a big old six or seven pound bass on here, I can handle him on this 20 pound line, no problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> If you could have any more fun than this, I don't know what you're doing. You're probably not doing it alone if you're having more fun than this. This is, God, look at that big old crappie. I'm just going to kind of give that crappie a little bit of, little bit of slack. See if, see if he can pop that bait loose. He can't. That's with a marvelous hook. Golly, that fish. Those are crappie way too big to be lifting in, actually. If you had a little six-pound test line, you start lifting those crappie in, some of them are actually going to break your, break your line. That's a big one. Mm about those points, low water. There's one. I actually have it move the boat. I threw all around the boat and then uh, turned around and threw back where I'd caught two or three and caught another one. Now that crappie's big enough to eat, but uh, he's pretty small compared to what I've been catching. That's a little rascal right there, but that's, that's about a 10 inch crappie right there is what it is. A crappie with 10 inch minimums, that's just about what you catch. I caught that and right on that pipe right there. Getting in close to that pipe, there's quite a few fish laying there. But there's one. Hey, it's the first one to bite I've got since the front hit. You see the wind is picking up pretty good. I think that might be a largemouth. If it's a crappie, it's a big old crappie. That's a largemouth, a nice largemouth. 
That's the first bite I've got since, and the wind's getting harder all the time. I know that and this is a small lake. I mean, it's a pretty good sized lake, but it's not like a thousand acres or anything. But uh, you can see, set my spot lock, you can see that the wind has picked up a lot. And that's the first bite I've got since the wind switched to the north. And I need a jacket, and my jacket's in the truck, but I, I was sweating, it's about 80 degrees, and now it's about 55. And we're gonna watch that rain. If it doesn't rain, we're gonna keep on fishing a while anyway. Gonna have to go back to the truck and get a jacket though. But uh, I know when you look at water through a camera, it's like tournament fishing. It can be terrible out there and it doesn't look all that bad when you're looking at it through a camera, but this little lake is starting to get little white caps on it. That's how hard the wind is blowing. We're probably looking right now at a 25 mile an hour north wind. And that's happened in about 15 minutes from changing, swinging around to the east and then around coming out of the northeast. So it's a very, very strong wind. I'm over back over here around my crappie hole where I caught so many crappie earlier. I got off of it. I want to go try to I want to go try to fish a point. Usually you can get around points on low water conditions and they'll stack up around points too. I want to go check that out, but this front caught me before I got to a nice point. Well, I got my jacket. And by golly, it's going to feel really good, too. I'm going to try to try to get out of this wind the best I can. You know, one of my philosophies about wind is don't fight the wind. Uh, you let the wind be your friend. Try to make it help you. It's not going to be our friend from a bite standpoint. But if we can find fish and get on them, some of them will bite. Some of them will bite. <laughs> Might have to put the bait right in their mouth. Might have to make a lot of cast into one spot, but some of them will bite. So I'm gonna to try to find some areas where I can get out of the wind a little bit, see what happens. As soon as I drop down in that ditch, still haven't got a crappie bite since the north wind blew, but I did a little moving around and found me a, found me a high bank that I could kind of get behind and break that wind a little bit. Wind's blowing pretty hard. This jacket sure feels good, I promise you that. Oh yeah, nice fish. Good little fish to catch on a little spinning rod. This little rod and reel I'm using, it's real pretty, you know, it's awfully pretty blue, obviously, but that's a nice fat fish. This is a Jimmy Houston Blaze Series combo. Combo means you can buy a rod and reel at the same time. Jimmy Houston Blaze Series, life is good today rods, I call them. If you got this in your hand, life is good today. <laughs> Look at this. We got soaked. I'm talking soaked. Not only that, now I've soaked my ram truck. It just come a pour down rain. You know, 20, 30 minutes ago, an hour ago, it was 80 degrees. And now it's 50 degrees out there. Wind blowing like a banshee. And raining. I mean, pouring down rain. Look at it. Just pouring down rain. And we, by the time we got back to the truck, get this, get this. We stopped the truck 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago and got our jackets to be cool. Now our jackets are soaking wet. Water running down my back and down my butt. It's running all over me. It's running all over me. It's where it's running. And uh, here we are. When it quits raining, I'm gonna go back out and dry out in that 50 degrees and catch some more fish. Not only did we have a situation of the wind changing from the south to the north, the temperature dropping, 20 or 25 degrees, but the clouds have gone away. Now there's still a lot of clouds around, but there's blue sky appeared right after the rain went through while we were sitting in the truck. Oh, there's a fish though. That's a largemouth. It's a bass. That's a pretty nice largemouth. How big is he anyway? He's not a giant. Boy, he's strong. Pretty nice one though. Pretty nice largemouth, by golly. Yeah, buddy. Now, when you have a situation like this, where you have these fronts come in, uh, you probably are gonna, these little baits like I'm throwing, a little crappie magic with a lucky bug on them, little blaze baits like that, are probably the baits to be using. That's a nice fish right there. That's a good three pound plus fish. Barbless hook hooked right in the top of the head. But uh, that little bait like that is really a good bait to move to and go to. And I'm gonna try some, 
deep smoothies just because the fish are at the right place to get them. But this might be the thing to throw to catch bass the rest of the day. I don't know. Yeah, buddy, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Surely, surely. <laughs> surely, surely. I can catch another crappie. I dropped, I picked that thing up and dropped it back down. Large mouth. Woohoo! What a jump. Holy moly. <laughs> Did you see that fish? He jumped three feet out of the water. Thinks he's a tarpon or something. I'm going to set my spot lock. I'm trying to fool around out here and find any little channels or dips or, or fall uh, ledges or anything. That's what I'm doing right now. And uh, I've kind of picked that thing up and let it fall. When I let it fall back down, he swallowed it. And I'm talking about swallowing a pretty nice fish. Oh, come in here, baby. Nice fish, yeah. Come here, pal. <laughs> they are eating that little bait. I think I'm going to pick a deep smoothie up. You know, I hadn't had a crappie bite since the wind changed to the north, but the bass are still biting. Now, they might not hit a crankbait. They might not, but I, th I think I'm going to try it. Well, I better throw back out there with this thing first, hadn't I? There's some blue sky, but the sun is behind the only little cloud. If it was 100 degrees, it'd be opposite of that, wouldn't it? It will be clouds everywhere and one little patch of blue sky, and, the, and that big blue sky would be where the sun was. About nine foot deep right here. Most of the fish I was catching was crappie earlier this morning is about 12 foot deep. I may have to find a ditch. It's got some 12 foot water in it. There's nothing wrong with catching those largemouth. I might be through catching crappie for the day. I went back. I went back when I came back out after the rain. I went back out. Is my hair getting dry? <laughs> Holy, that's a bluegill. That's a bluegill, sure as the world. Feels like a bluegill. Be a bluegill. Just, ah, it's a bass. I just wanted, I, I just, I, it's a small bass. I, I just wanted to be a bluegill just so I'd be right. <laughs> Just so I would be right. Boy, they're eating that little bait though, aren't they? That's a small one. That's what size you catch a lot on that little crappie magic and lucky bug. 12 inch fish. I can think of times in tournaments where I had four in a live well. That 12 incher right there would look pretty. Think of a Smith Lake tournament when I caught a 12 incher like that with 30 seconds left before I had to fire my mercury up and run to the, run to the weigh in. And that 12 incher that I caught that last 30 seconds is worth $10,000. That's right. Oh, I've got, I got them in this channel now. I spot locked down. That's three straight casts. This is this is going to be another bass, another small bass. I might have found a. Well, he may have been or not be that small. He's under the boat. Why did I go under the boat? Not bad at all. <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs>